Today I'm in, uh, what is it, Nucla, Colorado, working on another doggone boom lift. Just can't get away from these things, no matter how hard I try. Um, but today I'm going to be doing a timing belt on it. Back in there, taking all this crap off, doing a timing belt on it. And then I'm going to be resealing this cylinder here, this level cylinder oscillate cylinder or whatever they call it yesterday I was out here too I put a new there's the old one I put a new rotator in this thing kind of ready made a video on that so I I didn't make a video sorry but so he wants to try to get this thing pull up to snuff so he can rent it out and get it inspected so that rotator up there was um, it was done for and uh, was leaking and leaking and just had a bunch of slop in it. It was pretty trash, so put a new one of those on it. And then, of course, that cylinder down there is leaking pretty good. And then, when I was doing the inspection on this, I looked at his timing belt because nobody really thinks about them on these little industrial engines these Fords but they do have a, a timing belt just like your like a car and when I did the inspection on it I just peeled back the cover here and I could see that it's all dried out cracked up looks like it's about ready to give up so anywho so uh, I'm not sure where I'm gonna start I might start on the cylinder first and uh, get that done and then I'll move on to the timing belt.
Anytime you guys take apart a cylinder with one of these guys, if it has one of these in it, those hold valves there, man, those are the ones that will kill you guys. guys are doing these cylinders what a lot of people don't realize you know I see a lot of people making the mistake of even on videos and stuff is cleaning the cylinders it's probably one of the most important parts of doing this for me it's for a couple of reasons because if I leave oil and nasty stuff all over it I'm gonna get a call from the customer saying it's still leaking even though that's just leftover oil so I might have to drive two hours back to a job to say, oh no, that was just some oil that I spilled, you know, or from when it was leaking before, or, and then the next, the most important thing is being spotless clean on your, on uh, making sure nothing gets inside or on your seals because just a little piece of fingernail sized piece of dirt or mud or a little rock or whatever it may be even a little chip of paint can uh can wreck your brand new seals and scratch up your board too so this this style here takes it's got two pinholes it takes the the gland wrench um, so I'll clean these holes out a little bit better and then um, I'll go get my uh, wrench and see if I can get this off a lot of times this one doesn't look like it's ever been rebuilt but a lot of times these won't come off because they're over tightened um, usually it's when they're ready been reboot people think these have to be stupid tight on here and they don't they just have to be snug and uh, so a lot of times I end up having to use like a chain wrench or something, a pipe wrench or whatever to get those off, but we'll see. Just had a little bit of a little bit of rust in here. Probably why it was being stubborn. Now I can take your your hold valve back out. I put it back in there just to keep stuff from getting in there when I was cleaning it.
you can always stack when you take your um, seals out you can always stack them so that you know what order if you can't remember what order they came out in Okay, I had to change camera batteries. Um, anyhow, there was a couple things I wanted to talk about on this video. Um, the first one being the videos themselves. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of cylinder videos lately. I just figured after a few of them, they might people might find them boring or whatever. But uh, looking at the the views and stuff on the videos the cylinder rebuild videos seem to get more views than anything else so um being that said that uh, i guess maybe if that's what you guys if people want to watch then i'll keep doing them um if you guys want to let me know that'd be great the f the few people that do actually watch the channel but anyways um so i'll keep making them if you guys want to see them i guess i kind of understand it um there's you know i do a lot of cylinder rebuilding so i'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that are wanting to do some on your machines as well so um maybe that's counts for the the more views on it so i guess i'll keep doing them um anyways so these are nice and clean and it looks like all my seals are good um, I always always worry about that because I seem to have a trouble with getting the right sometimes getting the right seal kits for stuff <clears throat> even when I order it you know on serial number and you do everything and they still send you the wrong seal kit but so you guys have probably seen sometimes with these little cylinders you don't even need the tool but this little tool works pretty good for these these seals you can get them on uh, the u-cup you seal installers you can get a set of them on uh, online for about 30 bucks they're really cheap probably could make something if you wanted to there's nothing really to them but they do help and then um, 
yeah, always want your your groove here facing uh, towards the oil. So let's see if we can get it in there without even using the tool. Like I said, these these little ones on these little cylinders are aren't bad. Just try to avoid using a screwdriver. If you're gonna use something, use the the back side of it. So you don't damage it. for this one It's done. Easy peasy. Thank you. 
just spraying all the ports out. Spraying the barrel out real good. And then where the O-ring sits in here. Just want to clean that surface up just a little bit. Now we get my gland lubed up. Get this slit on there. And then it's a little assembly grease that I use to help hold those little. Um, backup rings in place so they don't move when I put the piston on. Just a little bit of red lock. Tighten that sucker down. 
here in just a sec. Okay, now swap it and swap positions again here. When you're working on genie cylinders, see there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a number, a build date, and then there's a part number on this cylinder barrel here. Make sure you get that information off of it, and you'll be a lot less likely to get the wrong seal kit. I still, even when I, sometimes I don't know if they send me the wrong one, but I still sometimes have trouble, but for the most part, if you have that number, machine serial, that barrel part number, and stuff like that, usually you're a lot light, less likely to get the wrong, wrong kit. So. Okay, now everything's lubed up. Here comes the important part, making sure that nothing feels off or binds. There we go. I mean, you're gonna have to push a little, but if you're really on this, like a side of the cylinder like this, if you're hammering on it, you're probably smearing your seal. Something's probably not right. It's actually off there because it's kind Thank you. 
Now these don't have to be on there stupid tight. Get them snug. Now I am gonna change the O-rings on the on the fit-ins as well. since it's off. Always a good idea. So just these little flat face low rings. Just get those changed. Use a little, a little grease too, just to make sure they don't fall out when I'm trying to get the cylinder in there. That uh, that loud car that you're hearing when I was out here when I was putting the rotator on this machine, he flew by with his bumblebee car blaring in his old muffler and everything. Exhaust fell off down the road. It was dragging and then it came off and it was rolling down the road. It was funny. <clears throat> Alright. I think we're ready to go back in now. Actually, before I go back in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean out that uh, pocket real quick. That goes back to what I was saying before about cleaning things up so people think don't still think they're leaking. Be back in a minute.
Alright, well it's all installed, got the pin keepers in, line tooked up, valve in, got it cleaned up the best I can without having a pressure washer, but I got the majority of the oil wiped up, so like I said, best I can without having a pressure washer, just spending hours, so pin keepers are in everything looks good and this is a cylinder that I can actually guarantee and warranty for the customer because um, the barrel looks good and the hydraulic fluid doesn't look terrible I think he said they actually changed it on this so that's amazing so they did a hydraulic service on it but um yeah so this one will probably hopefully last for the rest of this machine old machine's life and uh have no more issues with it leaking all over the place dripping everywhere he goes on the trailer and stuff so anyways so i'm gonna clean up my giant mess throw away all the old seals and um, move on to the move on to the next project here so yeah all right guys I'll see you probably see you here in a little bit